All right, Rockstar 2800, what's good? What it do, what it do, Cam, what it do, my guy? Man, grinding, man. You know, I see you doing your thing, man. You making a lot of noise, man. Appreciate you that. got it going on. Appreciate that. You know, doing you know doing my one two hip hop trends. You know, I own hip hop trends. I'm an owner of a, a hip hop trends is a blog. You know, a, a, a platform. You know, we've been blowing up, taking storm over the last year, having some of the hottest interviews on Clubhouse, IG Live. Uh, you know, covering some of the you know uh, hottest events. You feel me? Uh, you know, just staying in the conversation, creating the conversation, spinning the narrative, you know, doing a lot of mediation uh, within, uh, you know, celebrities or whatnot, uh, personalities, no jumper especially, you know. Well, that's what it is, man. You're definitely out there doing your thing. I see you grinding, the music, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything's moving, man. But I thought we'd kind of get to know you a little bit better for you know, the people that might not be familiar with you too much. So if you know what I'm saying, can you tell them, you know, a little bit about yourself and where'd you grow up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Rockstar 2800, man. You feel me? I'm from West Boulevard, Crip. You feel me? Uh, West Adams, West South Central District. You feel me? They know what's happening. Crenshaw and Adams, LaBrea and Adams. I uh, went to Crenshaw High School. I uh, went to Fairfax High School, Hollywood High School. Uh, you know, I'm a familiar face, man. I've been around, you feel me? And, you know, everybody kind of knows LA, South Central has like, you know, a pretty rough reputation. You know, what was things like for you growing up over there? Man, it's, it's hard for a young black man in Los Angeles. I always tell people that every day, man, like, you feel me? It's a different type of, it's a different type of animal. You be lucky to make it at 21. You, you be grateful to make it past that, right? You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, it's different. You know, you gotta watch your back, you know? Uh, it's a fucked up, it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a fucked up mentality, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, to uh, surpass that in any kind of form, fashion, like in a good way, you know, I applaud anybody because, yeah, like I said, being a young nigga, man, walking them streets, you know, you got to worry about the police harassing you or you got to worry about a nigga killing you. So, you know, them be the two things, man. That shit be crazy. For real, for real. And, you know, how's your growing up and, you know, you're going through a lot, you're seeing a lot. You know, what are some experiences that you can speak on that you've been through? I mean, shit, you know, I come from a single mom household. I don't know my pops. You feel me? Uh. You know, moms did time before, you know, she been away from me, she, she did. So I, I was always, you know, group homes, et cetera, et cetera, like moving around, you feel me? So I really had a fan for myself, you know, so I done seen it all at a young age. You know, when everybody had to go in, when the lights came on, I was still hanging out, you feel me? Cause I ain't had no guidance like that. I was still in the mix. I was hanging around niggas that was older than me. Everybody thought I was older than what I was because of that, you know? But yeah, no, nah, I mean, I've been through it all. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a straight member. You know, a real member. I got put on at 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? I got put on at 12 years old. Uh, my me and my best friend, rest in peace, who tatted on my arm, Tony KK. Uh, he got killed in 2008 by LAPD. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, LAPD, LA sheriffs. They killed him. You know, shot him in the leg. Said he was gonna be okay. You know, next day he dead. You know what I'm saying? Magically. Like, so, you know, like I done been through it all. I lost a lot of shit for this shit. You know, uh, my best friend brother, he he just died uh, not too long ago. Uh, they mama died from depression. You feel me? Uh, my big homie, Big T-Rock. I'm baby T-Rock from West Boulevard. Big T-Rock was a big influence in my life. He like a pops I never had. You know, he just died recently not too long ago either. You know what I'm saying? So I done lost a lot to get to this to where I'm at right now. You feel me? I done seen a lot, you feel me? I don't really like to glorify that shit though. Now, being in group homes and growing up, you know what I'm saying, rough and everything, man, you know, you mentioned getting put on your hood at 12 years old. What was going on at that age that made you wanna, you know, be in your hood and, and go that hard at such a young age? Yeah, I think it was just like, you know, you know, you want to be a part of something at that point. You know, you 
You you have nothing. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain at this point. You know, uh, at at that age, you you building your name, right? You you trying to become something. You want to do something. You want to be something. You see everybody having shit, having stuff. You you mesmerized by it. You you know what I'm saying? So I think that's where it was for me. And uh, you know my hood. You know my hood get money. You know what I'm saying? My hood known for getting money. So. That's what I was more attracted to more than anything. You know, I, I think I could have been from anywhere. You know, I mean, you know, growing up in LA, you're going to get tested. You feel me? You're going to be around certain motherfuckers. But I think it attracted me. Like, you know, my best friend, his whole family was from there. So, you know, at the same time, I'm over there. I'm really over there, though, in the neighborhood. So, and I'm seeing it firsthand. And I'm like, man, I need to get some money. That's all I'm thinking. I need to get some money. Cause once I get some money, I can get a car. I could, you know, I'm thinking about my future like at hand and how I could change my situation from little to everything. You know, everything I want. And you know, you sell that dream in your head, but that ain't reality. You feel me? But you know, you gonna you gonna have some fun. You gonna hit a couple of licks, and get some money. You gonna feel different a little bit. You feel me? But yeah, for the most part, like I said, like. I wanted to be from the hood because I seen niggas was getting money and I wanted to have that same feeling. I want to have that same respect. You feel me? But, you know, everything ain't always what it seems. You feel me? Once you grow up in this shit, you understand this shit. You know, I I, I wouldn't tell a nigga ever in his life to sign up for this shit. Straight up. Now, being that young, you know, I mean, maybe you're driving but you're probably not driving too much around. So you're walking, you know, and, and walking around LA can be kind of dangerous, you know, especially, you know, when you're from somewhere, is there any situations that you had, you know, growing up that, that were, that, you know, were kind of tense? Oh yeah, no, every day was tense. <laughs> every day was tense. You, you getting banged on or you banging on somebody at least once, twice, three times a day. Ain't no question. Uh, what do you think was like a specific situation you could take me I, through? I remember this one was... time. I remember this one time. So my best friend, rest in peace, Tony KK, he lived on 54th and 11th Ave. So that's right down the street from Crenshaw High. You know, a lot of people consider that neutral zone, right? Between the 60s, uh, the 54 VNGs, et cetera. But 11th Ave, if you really from over there, you know the West Boulevards was on 11th Ave. Like we, we 11th Ave was all block, period. But Make a long story short, I'm leaving out the homie house one day, me and him leaving. We walk across the street, I'm pissed off. I'm having a bad day. I'm all, I'm, I, I forget why I was, I was just flaming hot. I was like, I didn't give a fuck, right? I had nothing to lose, like type of mentality. And I remember we walking out, we walk across the street, it's a gas station across the street. And I remember these blood niggas pull up. They pull up all red, flamed up in the car. They like, they like, they did 6-0. They did 6 0. We not from 6 0. We from West Boulevard. So when they dissed that, I say, man, I'm from West Boulevard Crip. Feel me? Like, like, like aggressively on their ass. Like, they didn't even expect it. They like, oh, yeah? So they try to be funny, like, oh, y'all ain't got no blower, though. And then the homie had raised up his shirt. Them niggas get the skirt. Feel me? But it's just one of them days, like, where you don't know, you don't, you don't, like, if I don't give a fuck, you don't know what. It's gonna happen. Like, I don't care, right? I'm willing to die for this shit at this time. Feel me? Nigga, pull up on me, ask me where I'm from. Nigga, how dare you, nigga? Nigga, yeah, nigga, I'm from, what you gonna do? Yeah, it, it's, it's days like that. You get like that. You know, it comes immune. You're immune to this shit after a while, right? It's a fucked up way of thinking. Now, after something like that happens, man, you know, you know, does it change you at all or you just, you just be going more aggressive? Like I say, like I say, you just, you're immune to it. Like, you just start thinking this shit is normal. This is every day. So I, I really never really thought about it until I got removed from it, right? Older older as I got, right? Until I start removing myself and, and seeing other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, no, when you in it, you don't think about it. You don't think about it when you in it, right? It just is what it is. Like, this is what it comes with. You know, like, nigga, when I see you, nigga, I'm going to ask you where you from. Nigga, you an enemy, like, you know, when you in it, ain't no thinking about, like, you don't think about if it changed you 
or if you change, if you feel like you've seen a change, like now I could, t- yeah, for sure. I, I, I saw the change in myself, like later on, you know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, like, damn, you know, but that's from going other places. When you, when you trapped in a bubble, you ain't going to see it, homie. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be hard to see. One of the things you mentioned earlier was going to Crenshaw High. Yeah. Which is which is a pretty popular high school in LA. No, for sure. And I went some of the best years, I swear to God. So I went to I went to Hollywood first, then I went to Fairfax, then I went to Crenshaw. Crenshaw was actually the last high school I attended, public high school. Then I did alternative schools, et cetera, et cetera, right? But Crenshaw, them years, let me tell you, boy, <laughs> if niggas know, niggas know. Them years is like a movie, bro. I can't even Bro, niggas shooting dice in the hallway. Niggas got keys to fucking teacher faculty shit in the back. Like, fucking bitches. Like, bitches getting fucked. Like, it, bro, it was a fashion gangbang school, bro. I don't even remember class, my nigga. We in the hallway gangbanging, nigga. Where you from, nigga? As soon as I'm checking in, a nigga waiting for me while I'm checking in with the group home people. Nigga, couldn't wait to ask me where I'm from when I was by myself. Nigga, where you from? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Nigga, they gonna let everybody know. Oh yeah, nigga, West Boulevard checking in school. Feel me? Like, nigga, straight game, man, you thought it was like jail or something, but just free. You feel me? Young. Niggas had no cares in the world. Like, we was wearing big ass t-shirts back then, what, white tees, 3X pro clubs, you know? Like, come on, man, we was thugging. We didn't give a fuck. Crenshaw was really like, and a lot of niggas like, you know, a lot of 6 old like, you know, uh, I fuck with the neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with the gangsters. And, and I just want to make this clear for the record, too. I just want everybody to know. West Boulevard Crip, we not gangsters. We not neighborhoods. We Boulevard Crips. We Crips. Boulevard Crip gang. Deuces. 28th Street. We, we, You know, I got love for everybody. I fuck with the neighbors, and I fuck with the gangsters. I fuck more with the neighbors because my generation, a lot of my generation grew up over there. I knew Nipsey since I was 13 years old. You feel me? Like... I, I fuck with the six O's. Like, they're my niggas. You feel me? But I fuck with everybody. I know a little bit of everybody. I'm from LA, right? But I just want to get that clear because a lot of people be thinking, oh, West Boulevard is neighborhoods and nah, nigga. Because a lot of my OG niggas, a lot of my older niggas, they used to rock with the West LA card when they went to jail back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So you would fall into a dorm and it'd be West LA niggas and West Boulevards. Feel me? But my big homie in Generation Under started doing West Rolling when they go to the pen. They fall on the West Rolling. So they fall on the neighborhood car. But that don't mean we neighborhoods. And I got love for my neighborhoods. You feel me? So I just want to put that out there. You know what I'm saying? I, I fuck with everybody, homie. I'm not no biased nigga. I'm not no hater ass nigga. You feel me? If you coming at me right, if you coming at me correct, we can have a conversation. You feel me? And that's it. Like, I don't, I just want to set that record clear because I think a lot of people misconstrue just because I fuck with the neighborhood so tough that I'm not open to any, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Smack, shout out T-Rail. Feel me? Niggas embrace me. Niggas fuck with me. I can call these niggas, text these niggas right now. No problem. Feel me? So niggas got to get over that small minded thinking. I just want niggas to understand that part. But go ahead, Cam. Come on, bruh. No, it's all good. It's all good, man. We were talking about high school. Did you graduate from high school? Nah, <laughs> not a graduate. Not not a graduate. So I got so I got kicked out of Hollywood for beating up motherfuckers. Fairfax, I got kicked out for. Uh, so at a time they said you couldn't wear white tees because uh, you know I guess the East Side Mexicans. I think it was the F-13s or something. They. They had put something out on the news that was going to kill niggas with white tees and braids and some shit. So, like, the schools went on a high alert. No more white tees and shit. My, and I'm thinking, like, nigga, my whole closet is white tees, nigga. Fuck you mean? I can't wear a white tee to school. Nigga, so I could go wear blue and red, but I can't wear no white tee. It's crazy. So, I ended up getting kicked out of there because, you know, all I had was white tees at the time. And I wasn't going to follow the rules for that bullshit. You feel me? So I got kicked out of Fairfax for the whole white tee shit. Not want to wear another shirt, different type of shirt. Uh, and then I wasn't going to class. And then uh, Crenshaw High. I got checked into Crenshaw. Uh, got introduced to a whole nother way of life. Like straight up. I ain't going to lie. Crenshaw really was the birth of this cripping. For real, for real. 
You know, it, it was a lot of niggas who's doing life, a lot of niggas who's dead, a lot of niggas who, who not here that was really thugging up there during that time. And a lot of niggas that's out, like, you know, shout out Newport. You know, I went to school with Newport. Uh, went to school with a lot of people. Desto Dub went to Crenshaw. Uh, who else went to Crenshaw? They say Schoolboy Q was going to Crenshaw too around the same time. I never knew that though. Uh, but yeah, niggas was in there. Like niggas was going up there, and if you knew, you knew. You know, I had the West Boulevards. They know T Rock, Rockstar. Feel me? He over there with them. You know what I'm saying? It was like certain niggas. I was one of them niggas for sure. Ain't no question about it. Now growing up, you're in the streets. You know, you're going through these different things every day. You're running into ops. At any point, do you get arrested or go through anything? So I've been, I've been arrested. I've been detained. I've never been, you know, by the grace of God, homie. You know, I've never been in no, I've been in some shit, but an, another nigga took a rap for it. You feel me? But he, he was there with us. You feel me? And I told the nigga don't say nothing. You feel me? But nigga, he told on himself, right? And at the same time, I'm young, juvenile, right? All they do is ship you off to like group homes, et cetera, foster homes out the way, right? It wasn't really nothing. But yeah, by the grace of God, homie, I'm gonna be real with you, my nigga. I never been, I've been arrested, I've been fucked with, crash police, you know, uh, gang police, you know, for sure. Uh, but have I ever did time in jail? No. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you, you feel me? Have I did time in jail? No. Am I a real turf, baby? Yes, nigga. You know, have I did shit? Have I got away with a lot of shit? Yes, nigga. By the grace of God. You understand me? This shit for real, but, you know, uh, you know, I could be in there with niggas. I could be in there with niggas. I be, you know, I think about that shit every day. You know what I'm saying? But, nah. Like, during this time, I think more I was getting harassed growing up by police. It was more like the frisking, crash police Tuesday and Thursday. You know, if they see you, they gonna hem you up. You know, they might detain you. Uh, you know, we used to skip school. So when we skipped school, they used to send the undercovers. Crenshaw used to have undercovers, nigga. That shit is crazy. I'll never forget that. We was mobbing one day and they pulled up on us and got out and detained us, took us down for not being in school. And, and made a call. We had a call motherfuckers come get us. It was like some old other shit. Like, but yeah, homie, I ain't never really been to night. Like, no real trouble, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I say like I don't really glorify like all the bullshit, but I but I'm with all the bullshit though. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just one of them niggas, homie. I guess I just wiggles, you know what I'm saying? But not not saying I ain't been to no shit, but like I said, you know, by the grace of God, none of that shit really, you know, came back to haunt me or did nothing, you know. Now you quit going to school. And what do you do with yourself? Do you try to get a job? Are you still in the streets? Like, like what's going on? So after high school, man, I'm listen. I'm I'm full fledged banging all the way through high school though. Full fledged banging. Um, drop out of school. I I think no. What happened was so I got kicked out of Crenshaw, and uh, I started going to a home study school in the six O's. Uh, I. I what that motherfucker was called? I forgot the name of that shit, man. I started going to a home study program where I go pick up the work. And, you know, the group home I was living in, they they got me a tutor and all that. I thought I was going to end up graduating because I was doing good and all that. But the banging shit, nigga, the banging shit just wouldn't escape me. It seemed like every time when I try to do good, some more shit popping. So I was staying in a group home in the A-Trace. And uh, the A-Trace think I'm from neighborhood. Cause I go to Crenshaw, feel me? So I'm fucking with a little bitch on that street. Her brother from over there or whatever. So, you know, a lot of shit just got misconstrued. So they was calling the group home. It was a dude in the group home who was from that neighborhood. And he kept hearing shit about me. Like if they was gonna do something to me and I need to chill out, you feel me? When all reality, I wasn't doing nothing. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even tripping off them niggas. Like, you feel me? But I guess niggas had a problem because I was talking to the girl. You feel me? So they made it an issue. So they they scared the group home to be like, hey, we gonna come up there and do something if y'all don't get, you feel me? So they, they felt like they had no choice but to get rid of me. So they sent me to Orange County. They sent me to Orange County. I'll never forget this shit. Sent me to Orange County. I packed all my shit up, went to Orange County, 
When I got there, I saw some big ass SA motherfuckers and shit in there. And I'm thinking like, I'm not about to stay in this motherfucker. Fuck, I'm gone. Nigga, I left all my shit, hopped on the blue line, went back to the hood, nigga like, and just like thugged it out. Like, fuck it, like I'm thugging it out. Nigga, we was in the back of the door spot. That, and that's when me and Nipsey became kind of closer. I think Nipsey had just got put on the hood around that time. You feel me? So it, it like, it, it was crazy because I was staying in the back of their hood. I was staying in the Ville. And uh, we were staying in the dope spot. The homie had a spot. He just, I don't know how he came up on this spot, but came up on the spot. Old lady never came out the door. She never came out the room. I never seen this old lady to this day, but it was her house. But she never came out the door, but you would hear her voice. She be yelling, keep that shit down, woo woo. Straight dope house, I swear to God. Like, I never seen it. Runaways, cause the homie ended up cracking a bitch. And that's how I ended up being up over there. Anyway, we thugging it out, making a long story short. It was six hours in there, a couple West Boulevards. You know, Nip used to come through that motherfucker. I mean, everybody used to come, it's, it's they hood, right? It's the back, we used to shoot dice. All that in the back of the motherfucker. So this is after high school, directly after the whole group home shit. I'm thugging. I'm just in the streets now. You know what I'm saying? Like, no guidance. I'm, I'm out here just trying to really build a name for myself. But at the same time, I'm getting into it. I got a little shit cracking, right? A little shit popping off that, you know, just happened sporadically because I'm because I'm everywhere. I'm fucking with these. I'm fucking with them. Feel me? These niggas might got popped on. Now we got to go. You feel me? It's just like, it's so much shit, right? I couldn't even, boy, it's, you can't even put all this shit down. Like, all this sh all the events that occurred, I can't, I can't even speak on some of the shit, but it's just so many events that occur, you wouldn't even believe it. You feel me? Nigga was like beyond in the mix. You feel me? Is there any one story you can speak on? So if you know the Ville, the Ville is like the six old projects. It's like the six old projects, you know, they, they got their own apartments, right? And we in the back of it, we on the back of it. So, uh, just, just say we, we got caught slipping one night, man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas came through that gate and you know, niggas damn near lost their life. You feel me? But you know, a nigga did lose their life, but you know, we got spared and you know, you know, niggas came through there. You know, niggas came through there, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, it, you know, it, it get ugly like that. You feel me? It get ugly, you know, but yeah. So it's gated up, right? So some of the gates would be locked, but some of the gates were broken. You feel me? So niggas just pulled up, coming in, just get to, you feel me? Dumping, like, you feel me? And, you know. Some niggas got hit, some niggas didn't, homie. You feel me? How many shots went off, do you think? Shit, I'm gonna say about what? Probably like 11, 12, probably like 10, 11. You feel me? And somebody died that night? Oh yeah, for sure, a nigga got hit. You know, rest in peace to homie. I ain't gonna put too many, you know? Cause them don't be my politics, but I, nigga be right there. You feel me? For all the bullshit, so. And you were still in high school at this time? Or out of high school. Yeah, yeah. Remember at the same time, I dropped out, ended up getting out. You know what I'm saying? So, right. At this time, I'm just like, it's up, right? I don't care. It's like, I'm trying to get up. I, I done said, fuck the group homes. I done said, fuck high school. Now I'm, I'm trying to find my purpose. I'm like, look, I got to build something. I got to make something happen, right? But at the same time, I got this, that going on. I got this beef, this beef, this beef. In the hood, got in the hood activities going on, right? So it's just a lot going on for at a young age and you don't really process that at that time, right? You don't understand that. You just going with the flow. You just, you building your name. You baby T-Rock, you, you know? It is what it is. And at what point do you start rapping? Uh, well, I've been rapping forever. I've been rapping since before the hood. I've been rapping. I always, you know, always was into poetry. I was into like just writing, you know, English and reading was my favorite cl classes, courses, all through elementary, middle school, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I always had good grades in those particular. So, I mean, I started rapping young. Um, 
my shout out my god brother Monk McNasty. You feel me? Uh, he the first nigga to put me in the studio at like eleven years old. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know that that was a nigga. My nigga Monk McNasty. He like a battle rapper. Uh, he battled disaster before. Uh, real cold MC nigga from LA. My nigga. Uh, he always gave me an outlet. So you know he thought the studio would help me. And uh, he also gave me an outlet with selling CDs and DVDs, you know what I'm saying, at a young age, instead of selling drugs, you feel me? So, uh, yeah, shout out Monk McNasty, man, because, yeah, like I said, around that time, I got in the studio 11 years old. Uh, when I got put on the hood, I started making music for the hood, rapping this and that, dissing, doing all the dissing. The homies, like, I remember my homie, Baby KK, like, bro, you diss too much, bro. You, you rep the hood, you feel me? So... You know, uh, early, so my early on was like strictly for the hood type shit, you know, rapping 12, 13, 14, rapping. But, uh, you know, I switched it up over time, though. You feel me? OK. And what are you working on now? So right now, I mean, shit, I got shit. I got shit with um, I got shit with Mozzie. I got I got all facts. Rockstar, Rockstar featuring Mozzie, uh, Rockstar featuring Slim 400. Uh, Rockstar featuring AD. All these videos is out on platforms. I've been on Worldstar twice. Uh, I mean, shit. I got albums out. I got projects. I got mixtapes. I mean, I got mixtapes from back in the day. I'm talking about from Dat Piff. Live mixtapes. You can go on there and check me out. Uh, you know, under the name Rockstar. I wasn't Rockstar 2800. I just recently put... Well, I've always been Rockstar 2800, right? On Instagram. So, you know, recently we just decided to roll with that. It's a little bit more easier to recognize, understand, instead of just using the Rockstar brand. So, you know, plus I had a whole trademark shit going on uh, with the whole Rockstar shit. You know how they be, they sound too much like Rockstar, the energy drink and this and that and all. You know, they be having all type of bullshit. So, yeah, Rockstar 2800 when I'm rocking. But yeah, my music, I got albums. I mean, I got about four or five albums out. I got mixtapes, eight, eight to nine mixtapes out. On that piff for sure, you can go to that piff and check that shit out. Uh, I, I've been rapping forever. Uh, my own money, invested my own time, studio time, uh, videos, these features. You see, uh, you know, some of them was off the stretch, some of them I cashed out, and I got more music right now too. I got more music just sitting, you know, just sitting, man, ready, ready to come, man, ready to come out. But I did want to talk. I don't know if we was gonna talk about this though, but yeah. Um, since we talking about my music, I do got some shit coming out. You know, I worked with Nip way before Nip died. You feel me? And we had a little situation going. We was trying to get a video done before he died. Unfortunately, we didn't make it to that. Um, I just want to say this. His brother, Black Sam, shout out Black Sam. Shout out the whole All Money Yen. You know, they kept their word. And uh, we got some shit in the making. We got some shit coming, man. You know what I'm saying? So y'all be on the lookout for that uh, soon or whenever. You know what I'm saying? But we definitely handled some business and we got down to it. Black Sam, man of his word. Uh, and you know, we good over here. Nip my brother forever, so you feel me? But yeah, I got some music that's gonna be coming out. Y'all gonna be very impressed with, very impressed with. Well, that's what's up, man. You know. Working with Nipsey Hustle is that the only song that you guys had, or do you guys have a lot of yeah, work yeah. That out? well, me and Nip got a different relationship, right? We we got a we got a real street relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's not no, it's not no, like you can't fake this shit. Like I'm really his cousin. I'm really his cripping cousin. You know what I'm saying? And I say that honorably, right? Uh, I was there from the beginning. I used to live in a group home on Chesley and Slauson. It's right there by Nick's. Nick's check cashing. It's not no Nick's check cashing no more, but I think it's something else. But it used to be a Nick's check cashing. And Nip used to rap about it in his raps, how he stood in front of the Nick's all day trying to get his paper up, right? So, I you know, me being a young nigga at that time, I used to go to that corner and hang out with all the rest of the young niggas. Like, we was all just lost. We was all on the ground. But Nip always been a hustler. Nigga was always out the trunk selling CDs, DVDs. Nigga always had a chain, always nip like, so I just don't want to get this like, nip always been a hustler. Before this rap shit, before niggas knew he was, whatever, as a young nigga, we used to call him Lil E. 
His name Armias, right? Yeah, we used to call him Lil E. That was his name, Lil E. I'll never forget that. But like I said, fast forward, he get put on the hood. I get I get put on the hood, then he get put on the hood. And we link back up. And it's not about no music. It's about getting to the money. <laughs> it's about getting to the money. You feel me? One thing about Nip, man, he a forward thinker, man. That nigga play chess, man. He don't play checkers. You feel me? So just know that, like, yeah, you know, it's a lot of shit I can't speak on and I gotta save some shit, but our shit wasn't no music, it wasn't no fake shit. It was more like, bro, like, you from a whole nother area. I wanna shed light on that somehow. You fuck with me. And we gonna, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just, he a big bro, man. You know, I, I miss that nigga a lot, homie. You feel me? It, it, it's different without him. It's real different. Is there any, like, lessons or game that you got from Nipsey? Man, it's so much game, bro. So much game. I mean, when you don't think it's game, it end up being game later, right? You talking, you having a conversation, and he say some little simple shit. But you don't you don't feel it till later. You don't understand it till later. So that's a lot of our conversations have been like that. You know, I'm always trying to pick at his brain, right? I'm always trying to soak up some shit. I never been no nigga to ask for no handout with cuz. I always ask her, what you want me to do? What you need me to do, nigga? What can I do? Can I do it? He like, bro, no, nah, no, nah, you ain't gotta do that, cuz. I'm, I'm like, bro, I don't work for mines. Feel me? And he know like. So, you know, with us, it's just more like, it's a trust, it's a trust factor. And, I, and I'm just gonna say this, he trusted me a lot, a lot, homie. And, and that go a long way. And that mean a lot to me to this day because I be like, damn, bro, even at the status he was, I'm talking about victory lap, when all that shit dropped, at the status he was, bro, we was still into some other shit. You feel me? So. Just shout out Nick, man. Shout out All Money In, man. You know, niggas is real as it gets, man. Niggas is not no fakes, man, for real. No pump fanging over there. I swear to God. Niggas is the truth. Man, well, that's what it is, man. You know, uh, rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. For real. You know, rest in peace, Nip, man. Def definitely was a huge loss for the West Coast, and, you know, obviously for his neighborhood and all of his friends, but. You know, he definitely had an impact, major impact. For real, for real, on everybody. Good nigga, definitely, man. man. Good nigga, I swear, man. Hey, uh, we both Leos. Me and Nip both Leos. We both fire sons. So, you know, uh, me and bro, we used to be like, you know, like, we got this fake, like, competitive with each other, you know? Like, I used to be like, oh, that's rap money. And then I pull up at something and I'd be like, yeah, nigga, this some street money, though. This ain't no rap money. That's, you know? So we used to have like little shit like that, be joking around, you know? But that's my nigga though, for real, for real. Nah, that's what it is, man. All right, Rockstar, I appreciate you, man. Man, you know you supposed to ask about the whack shit. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, we can talk about whack. you wanna talk about him? <laughs> nah, 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 it's just a little shit. You know, I just, you know, you brought up Nip. When we brought up Nip, it just made me think like, when he said he wasn't a legend and you know, and I was just thinking like, man, my nigga's so legendary, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit he accomplished after he died, homie, the 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 peaks he's reaching. Like, come on, man. Like this guy's a legend, man. But yeah, so me and Wack been getting into it. And uh that's one thing I didn't I didn't agree with him on, right? I never agreed with him on those type of remarks. When you say Nipsey not a legend, when you say this and that, and you got video footage and this and that, nigga, show the footage, nigga. You feel me? We ran a room in my room, me, Newport, where we was on his ass. You know, it went viral. It went crazy. It happened in my room, Hip Hop Trends. And uh it went crazy. And uh, you know, we we, you know, he had he had wind of me, but he didn't really know of me. And I used to come in different rooms and talk about topics and whatever. But lately the shit just got misconstrued. I don't I don't know. Like some bullshit, like, I don't know if this shit is WWE or what, bro. I don't know what to think about this shit no more. And and that's what I want to say, like, whack, bro. I don't know if this shit really fake, bro. Just let me know if this shit fake, bro. Because he confuses me, you know what I'm saying? Like, certain shit, like, you know, we had got into it uh, about two, three weeks ago. Shit went viral. 
uh, 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 he thought I said something about his family. He read a text message wrong or they doctored up the text message. So he went live and said, fuck my mama, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, Rockstar, you got my family name in your mouth? Fuck your mama. So, okay, you want to play like that, nigga? Okay. I add him on Instagram, boom, put the whole uh, meme out on him. I got the meme of uh, me, uh, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock it with whack face on it that went crazy. So no jumper post both of those. No jumper post both of them. They, they, they post his and then post my response. It go crazy. The nigga blocked me. The nigga whack blocked me. Now he don't want to play no more. Now he don't want to play. Now he, he want to play with everybody else. But when a real nigga play, now you don't want to play. I said, nigga, I'm trying to eat too. Let me play. Let me have my, like, come on. What's up with this, bro? You call me out. You talk shit on some shit you ain't even do your research on. I don't talk about niggas' mamas. I don't talk about niggas' families. I don't talk about niggas' girls. I don't, I don't do that. That's not what I do, cuz. It's not in my character at all. You feel me? Like, so he was misinformed. You feel me? And that shit looked all put together, doctored up the screenshots he sent me. Okay, whatever. So, you know, uh, he called Flacco. So this was the whole thing the other day. So Poetic Flacco came in the room to basically say why he been off Clubhouse. But we know why he been off Clubhouse. Wack had called him, basically intimidating him, telling him like, you know, you fucking with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I, so he scared, he scared Flacco off Clubhouse. I, I really feel like that. Flacco, Flacco gonna tell you different though. Flacco gonna be like, nah, nah, it's some other shit, some other shit. But, you know, we know the truth, right? He don't wanna get in between it. So I really fuck with Poetic Flacco. I, I built a rapport with this man, right? This really like my brother. Like, I could call Flacco right now, so I love, we good, we exchange content, we hop on each other's lives. You know what I'm saying? This, this is my boy, right? So he don't want to get in the middle of me and whack. But make a long story short, during the room, a text had came into whack, a text had came into Flacco saying that whack might have gotten to it in London. Might have gotten to it with Mayweather people. And we didn't know if it was true or not. So I text 600, who is C-Mac ex-manager, boxer nigga who was on the Floyd Mayweather card this past. And uh, I'm like, what's up with Wag, man? We hearing he got into it. He said, I don't know. I'm in Dubai. Okay, in the discussion, right? We're not going to talk about it no more. Wack takes it upon himself to come in there later. Oh, Flacco got my name in his mouth. He putting out fa false allegations. Uh, he's saying, bro, listen. He said he don't know if it's true or not. How's he spreading room? I like, this dude just runs with anything, right? He just comes in there and runs with anything. So we just get into it again, right? We get into it again. But, you know, it's all over the internet. You know, I just I just want to send a message to Wacky Wack, man. You know what I'm saying? I just want Wacky Wack to know it's all good, bro. You know what I'm saying? If you want a friend, you can holler at me, bro. We can holler. We can chop it up. I know you a little older and shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't be on no fly shit. You know, you be out the way, you know. I'm a cool young nigga, man. Come on, man. We could we could, we can exchange and we can holler. We ain't gotta do all the yelling, tough talking, bro. I'm not with none of that. All that like when we be on there, bro, I can't even get a word off, my nigga. Like, that's how loud and monoxious this man is. You feel me? So, yeah, wacky wag, man. You gotta chill out, man. Too many red bulls for wacky wag, man. That nigga be off them red bulls, nigga. I don't know what he be off, man. That nigga. As I say, this shit WWE is he Vince McMahon. I, I'm confused. I'll be confused. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, wacky wack man. Just tap in, man. Hey man, shout out Ken Capone for having Rockstar 2800 on here on his hood day, nigga. Today my hood day. You feel me? Shout out all my homies, man. West Boulevards from all around the world. We got homies in Boston now. You feel me? Uh, yeah, man. We thugging, man. You know I appreciate the opportunity though, homie. For real, for real. That's what it is, man. I'm glad I could help, man. Like I said, I got the hip hop trans platform. You know, uh, you know, I ain't trying to cross in nobody lanes. I'm just doing the clips. I I'm, I'm touching on, you know, little hot topics. I'm going live. I got the rock star reaction. So yeah, basically, I just trans. So my whole thing was I took a back seat from this rap shit to get the media shit popping. 
Cause like I said, like when we was in the pandemic, uh, uh, you know, I'm known for throwing shows in Arizona. So that's where I'm at right now in Arizona. I'm throwing shows. I was throwing shows. You know, I got it cracking, right? We bringing OT Genesis out. We bringing all these people. We, I, I got a list of names on them brought out. Pandemic hit. 50 cent capacity, 50 percent capacity is all we can have in the building. How I'm supposed to make any money? You know what I'm saying? Like, I got deposits down. I had to, we had to push back dates. Bro, I lost so much money in the pandemic, man. You know what I'm saying? So we 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 pivoted and switched gears and hopped online. My boy told me about Clubhouse. I said, okay, let me check this out. I start seeing how it is. Okay, for sure. Okay, let me start hip hop trends on here. Let me see if I can create something. Boom. It started cracking off. I started doing interview, 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 interview. Uh, you know, sporadic shit start happening. Motherfuckers just coming in the rooms, exposing people. Uh, it just started going crazy. And that's how I got to know Jumper. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got to know Jumper for sure. You know what I'm saying? So uh yeah, uh now we like we setting up for a podcast, hip hop trends podcast. I mean. You know, I'm I'm hopping into this world, right? And I'm new. I'm new at it. I'm learning. I'm bumping my head. I'm getting my feet wet. You know, it, it's interesting, man. Street nigga turned blogger, man. Well, that's what it is, man. I wish you success. Man, I appreciate You're that. Definitely gonna get it cracking. I appreciate that, Cam, man. Much love, man. For real, for real. For sure. All right, bro. Take All right, care, for sure. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.